Good morning. Well, I utilized the whole 30 minutes of green of GPT today. Um, I had to set up a little bit of stuff, plus I ran a little bit late. I think it's a little dark. Let me just see if I can get any more lights on. I'm in the chapel again, and usually it's a little more light than this. Let's see. Uh, there we go. I knew there was something I missed. So, <clears throat> today I wanted to give you a light. You know, Sundays I really try and keep my lesson uh, or my little talk close to the um, a more faith-based type of conversation, uh, hopefully not intruding on people's personal beliefs. So I'm going to switch my camera around just for a minute so I can show you some of the surroundings here and get a feel of the uh, Orthodox faith. So in the Greek Orthodox faith, we, we use, and I'm in, the, I'm in the chapel, so this is not being used today, we use a common cup and we use a common spoon for distribution of divine liturgy of the Holy Communion. Okay, and so this is the patent at one at some point right now the priest is in the preparatory services of the liturgy and he is preparing uh, the gifts as we say. So I'm going to cover up the chalice and cover all this up and come back to me for okay. So I just wanted you to get a feel for what I'm going to talk about from the standpoint of um, the lesson or the takeaway today from from uh, my faith. And I think there's a lot of life lessons to us in, in all faiths, whether they be um, Christian, Judaic, um, it doesn't matter. I believe there is a great deal to be taken away. So <clears throat> I wanted to, one of the things I get to do every week, I'm blessed to do, and I think I've mentioned this before, is I get to make the holy bread, which you call prosphora, which is a gift. And let's see, there it is right there. And you'll see that it has markings on it. And those markings... The three in the middle that are the same, that go up and down, those are uh, Jesus Christ conquers, okay? And that will go right in the middle of that pattern that I showed you uh, as we begin to place the universe on there. The one to my right that looks like a triangle represents the mother of God. And the one to the left is the nine, the nine orders of angels and hierarchs and, and prophets and that that preceded Christ, okay? So when we... When I bring this, this is in my, my talk today, my little point of today is about the preparation of this holy bread. Because the prosol literally means it is a gift. So when I come in, uh, when I go home at night, just begin this, I have some prayers I say, and I then I take my flour and my yeast and, um, and some uh, salt and, and some water and I just make this bread. So I want you to think of the process of getting to this bread, coming to this, this church and being blessed to be um, Holy Communion for our, our people. So think about it. There is wheat that is grown. There are grapes that are grown. And then those, that grain and those grapes get stomped on. They get worked on, right? They get beat on, right? So that they can now, when they are beat on and stomped on, they become a different product. They become flour, and then they become this watery thing we call that turns into wine. <clears throat> now, in the divine liturgy in church, we will start. Father right now has taken this this loaf of bread, this brosfero, and he has begun to cut it up into its unit pieces. One of the other unique things that he will do is there is there is a list for the people who have prepared this brosfero. There's a list there, and they are, they are sitting at the uh, or the table of oblation, and people have given him a list of people who will be remembered for those who have died, the triumphant church, and those who are present still, the militant church, because we're still working. We're under that duress. We're under that, remember that word I used a couple weeks ago, askesis. We're still in that struggle of life. And so... So uh, he will take in each name individually, he will put on that patent as a crumb. So that's why I said the whole universe is there because you have Christ in the Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ conquers, you have uh, the mother of God, you have those nine orders of angels and hierarchs and prophets, and then you have all these people that names have been remembered for that moment in the prayers of the priests for that day. Now, now, when we, when we take this, it goes, in, it goes on that patent, 
and it transverses the church. The chalice only has wine and water in it, and the elements from the prosphoro are on there. And now it came, comes through, and that represents our journey through life. Because our journey through life is representative of all the things that have worked on, all the forces that have worked on us, um, and, and going through there. Father, Father Nick says, my prosphoro is upside down, so I don't know, is it better to go like this? like this, like this, I don't know, so I apologize for that. Um, I forgot to switch the little thing so it would, would go um, reverse it. So that journey that you call the great entrance in the divine liturgy represents our journey through life and the, the change that's going to occur to us in the church at that moment in this mystical sense. So the sort of thought I want to take away from that today is this. In life, we are worked on by different forces. They beat on us, they pound on us. Sometimes they drive us down. But look what comes out of it. When we stay motivated, we have the knowledge, we have the tools like we talked about yesterday, and we fight through it. And we get the benefit of those things to us, of the work we've put in. Even if the wine never became part of the Holy Communion. That wine would now have been transformed to a grape, to something sweet and uh, that people like to drink, right? That if the, even if the bread, even if that flour had never come become this bread, it would become some sort of bread that could have nourished people that eat, eat bread. So when, the lesson I think I would like you to really Focus in is not whether you're Orthodox Christian or not Orthodox Christian or something like that. The lesson I would like you to take away from this is we have life forces that work on us and they work on us hard, they beat on us, they work us, but the product that comes out in the end is better. The thing that we become is better for everybody around us because our experience, our trans, our trans, um, um, our transformation is a lesson to everybody who is around us. It is a lesson that we teach our children. It is a lesson that we teach our friends, our spouses. It is something that we now are obligated to share our experience in purity and in honesty to people so that they can grow in their own right. And just like every coach I told you that is on this who is um, you know, always wanting to help people, we help people by sharing our experience. The stuff we learned in college probably has passed by a long time ago as usefulness. Our life experiences are, and the experiences we have working with clients. The first day I trained a person, about all I knew how to do was to yell at them and coach them up and tell them how great they were doing and be that sort of like uh, cheerleader kind of coach. Today, I understand 45 years later about how important mindset is, how important your spiritual compass is, how important the metabolic eating is. I understand all those other things. It's an evolution. And what has gotten me to that point is the work that life has done on me to make me better. Okay? So in this 55 days, you've certainly had an accelerated course to being your best because all those components that can function and give you fortitude and make you better They've been here available for you. Unfortunately, we're moving into the last week of the 55 days. Monday will be the last webinar that Phil gives. I want to remind you, if you have a friend who has not gotten on this or you have not started in wholeness yet to this program, to, to jump on and start at week one today or tomorrow and start with week one's webinar and go through the webinar and treat each day, each week, like one day in the program. because. When Phil developed the seven day metabolic reboot with his team down in Weston, they used it and had tremendous results. We look forward to an exciting week coming forward. We look forward to the webinar tomorrow night at 7 p.m. And then the following week, make sure you fill out those things because th then what's gonna happen is there are some great things that you're going to be able to do um, and win because of the things that Phil, Phil is doing. Each one of us as coaches is donating some service or that to the, the uh, whole group. 
And I have not, I have not told Phil what I'm donating yet because I'm going to need his help because um, I noticed that the things I were going to donate, like a biofeedback, is already been donated by other guys that do it on our group. So I look forward to figuring out with Phil what my contribution to you is going to be. And uh, we will go forward from that standpoint and have a, a great week. It's an exciting week. There will be a sense of urgency for you this week because you want to get all that information that is out there. If you heard a presentation by one of, our, one of the other coaches, go back and listen to it again. See if you can download it on your computer so that you'll always have that if it particularly touched you. And I hope that you have a wonderful Memorial Day. Thank you for all the people who have given us this wonderful freedom that we have in this United States. Although it doesn't feel like we have much freedom now. And, you know, right now we, uh, we, we limit who comes to church and if we can come to church. And we limit um, the style that causes controversy on how we go out, whether we wear a mask or don't wear a mask. Hopefully um, the kindness in our hearts will get us through all that. And we will uh, be understanding of each person's plight and each person's thing. And enjoy this day and enjoy this weekend. And remember the wonderful people who gave so much that life worked on them, just like we worked on the wheat and the, and the grapes to make it wine and flour. And just like when I made this bread, I kneaded, I banged and worked on the flour, water, and salt, and yeast to make this bread so it would rise. So I hope today that you find the power, the knowledge, and the desire to rise to being better than you have ever been, and you continue that process so that you teach and love everybody who is around you. And a special, special happy birthday tomorrow for someone who just joined us, Christina Paspalakis, Papalambros Paspalakis. Happy birthday for tomorrow for you. And Billy Boy is out here already at church watching to make sure people come in that are allowed in that they come in, their temperature's taken and that, and Billy's birthday is today, my, uh, one of my great adopted sons that I have. So God bless all of you. Have a wonderful weekend and have a wonderful day.